Greetings in Jesus' name. Now I want to do a brief follow-up on our show us a sign message about the false signs and wonders and all the stuff that's going on with doctrines of demons all over the place in the system today called uh, different spirits preaching a different gospel and I think that's exactly describes what's happening take a look at my website at standinagap.org and my holding firmly account on YouTube and channel you can contact me on my holding firmly at gmail.com anytime you need to have a question or you can look at the website at Stand in the Gap and all the PDFs and the books and all the rest of the files and stuff we have uploaded there. And of course my channel, you can just go to YouTube and type in Holding Firmly as all one word and get a good selection of the videos or if you know a particular title. And you're welcome to attach them to your, your own blogs and your own pages and uh, use this stuff as you see fit for uh, the advancement of uh, the message and pulling down the strongholds. Getting right into this, we see this different spirit being manifested in all kinds of ways that we talked about in the show us a sign message in visions and dreams and doctrines of demons especially. Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, he tells him in uh, verses 6 through 9, he says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you by the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. And even if it were an angel of heaven, Preach any other gospel to you than the one we preach to you. Let him be accursed. Anathema, of course, this is the worst cursed. Anathema, be accursed. As we have said before, and so say again, if anyone or any preaches any other gospel to you, you see an angel from heaven, you see a light, you see some vision, some dream, preaches any other gospel to you than what you received from Jesus Christ, about take up your cross and strive to enter through that narrow gate, then let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. If only people would take that advice to heart. Remember Paul warned the Corinthians in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, about these different spirits preaching a different gospel, and you put up with it. And that's what you're doing. You go to these rallies, you go to these big events, and these light shows, and these concerts, and it's a different spirit altogether from Christ, because nobody's coming out of their vile sins. In fact, everybody is entrenched in their vile sins, and you put up with it. You think it's of God, but actually it's seducing spirits that are appearing in these extraordinary manifestations in this euphoric experience that you're having, and you're being preached doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons, come receive Jesus. Uh, he loves you no matter what you do. Come as you are. Uh, no repentance, no self-cleansing humility, no brokenness. That's why everybody stays addicted to their sins. So these seducing spirits are at work in an army of willing participants who believe that they have some kind of special anointing from God as the messengers that speak on his behalf under his authority. And I remember hearing that so much when I first got into this and was exposed to all that stuff back in the 80s. And you can't touch God's anointed. I kept hearing that from the preachers. You, oh, don't touch God's anointed. But yet they weren't preaching the truth out of the scriptures. They weren't preaching repentance and faith proven by deeds. They weren't telling man that he had the ability to obey God. All they were doing was putting on a magic show or some kind of emotional hype or euphoric thing that made people think that there was something going on. But no, you can't touch God's anointed. These people think that they're anointed, but they're anointed by seducing spirits as I see it now. So what happens with these people, they, they fall under a system of theology that turns them into darkness. Instead of away from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God, they go into darkness and under the power of Satan who holds the world under his sway. It's called the prince in the power of the air. See, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness and exchange it for a lie. And they love not the truth that they might be saved by. See, they don't love the truth. Suppressing it means they hold it back, they resist it. And that's exactly what these people do. You give them the truth. Try giving the truth to these people that have had these special manifestations or some dream or vision, and they got everything based on that. Or try giving it to somebody that's sitting under these doctrines of demons about faith alone and total depravity and substitution and imputed righteousness of Christ, and you're, you're clothed by his finished work. All the theological terms of nonsense, they won't listen to a word you got to say, no matter what scripture you give to them. They ignore the words of Christ. See, they don't possess the discernment in these spiritual matters to understand 
who serves God and who does not serve him, like Malachi 3.18 says. That's why they say, well, the finished work of Jesus Christ, or I'm clothed in the righteousness of Christ. See, those things aren't in the scriptures. But yet they hold them as though that's exactly what they're doing. That, that it's engraved in stone. That's why their profession of faith is so dry and dead and lifeless. And the converts then are in a state of complete complacency towards God, dead to God. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked would pretty much describe them. Because nobody has escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And nobody's a partaker of the divine nature. They're a partaker of some nature, yes, some seducing spirit, but not the divine nature. And they don't possess the like precious faith of the saints. And they have no real knowledge of God. See, when Peter says that in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God in Jesus our Lord, that his divine nature has given to us all things that pertain to God, life and godliness, through the knowledge. See, this is correct and precise knowledge here. Same as Hebrews said 26, when you sin against that knowledge. It's through the correct and precise knowledge of him who calls you by glory and virtue, by which he has given you the exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruptions in the world through lust. But see, you're not going to partake of the divine nature until you crucify your flesh with its passions and desires and be raised to the newness of life in regeneration. That's not going to happen under this false message, under this doctrine of demons that you're listening to. So what is what he's talking about? You can only know God through your systems of theology or by some manifestation you think happened. So you don't have a correct and precise knowledge of him or his divine power that's available through regeneration after you, you come through repentance so you can truly escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. See, that kind of stuff's just ink on a page to people. You read that, you read that scripture to people, they don't have a clue what you're talking about. In the, in, the, in the churches today. If you jump up and down and bark like a dog and roll on the floor and touch people and they fall down and, and all that stuff, they think that's of God. But they reject the Word of God because they suppress it and they've exchanged it for a lie. They don't love the truth. See, that's why their salvation is perceived then through a filter of human reason and persuasion, like a persuasion of rhetoric, not by the power of God, like the preaching of the cross. See, man wants their signs, and they, they either want signs or wisdom, just like, like Paul says there. He says, he says, for the message of the cross is foolishness of those who are perishing. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 18. It's, it's foolishness. See, the preaching of crucifying your flesh with its passions and desires is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it's the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. See, these theologians with PhDs after the name, they think they got all this stuff neat, in neat little packages and defined. Who is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who would believe. For the Jews request a sign in the Gentiles wisdom. Here we go. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block to the, Jew, to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Greeks and Jews, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. See, this is what's happened with these, with these systems of theology that these people have fallen under, under both ends of the spectrum. The people that want signs and wonders and manifestations, and the people that just want the wisdom. They want the great swelling words. They want people handling the Word of God craftily and deceitfully so that they can fit it into that nice little doctrine. Bottom line, they don't have to do nothing. It absolves them from all their responsibility. So, the, so we have the spirit of error, or the spirits of error, let's say plural, providing both sides 